So one of the things when studying for the MCAT that um, you might be wondering is like, what do other people wish they had known or what do they wish they had done differently? And I know that's something I wish I had been able to ask somebody about is like, what are the mistakes you made or the things you wish you understood so that you weren't worried or scared or whatnot? So what I want to do now is talk to you a little bit about the 10 things that I wish I had known before taking the MCAT. The first thing I wish I had known is that this test is doable. And I remember before I took the MCAT that there were, um, I was in a class and there were some people and like one person had got a 520 and they were already accepted to a bunch of schools and somebody else had got like a 490 and they were gonna have to retake the MCAT. And I remember thinking like, does anybody just get a normal good score to get into schools and you know, move on with their life? Like, is that a possible? And so one of the things I wish I had known was that yes, it's completely possible to do well on the MCAT to not be super stressed about the MCAT and to be able to accomplish it, take the test, get the score you need and move on. So the second thing I wish I had known is that it's okay. And not only is it okay, it's better for your mental health if you can identify what score you need and then go from there. It's okay not to uh, necessarily need a 520 plus. And that's super important because for some people, their goals require them to get a 520 so that they can go to the schools they want. But for others, you may not need that sort of score. You may need like a 510 to get into your state school. And that's where you want to go. That's where you'd be happy. That's your first choice. So that's all you need. And I know for me that it would have been very helpful early on if I could have said, okay, this is what I, the score I need. This is kind of my stretch goal. And that's what I'm going to work towards. Not necessarily the highest score I can possibly get because I don't need that for what I want to do. Which brings me to my third thing, which is stretch goals. Stretch goals are great and goals in general are great because they really push you to kind of go further. And a stretch goal, if you're not familiar with that, is basically saying, okay, my goal score is a 508, but I'm going to push for a 510. Like that's what I really like want to get. But if I get a 508, like that's perfectly good for me. I'm okay with that. I'm happy with that. 510 and my goal score is a 513. So I wish I had known that once you kind of hit your goal score, if your goal score is a 513 and you're scoring 512, 513, 514, it's time to push your goal score because that goal score gives you something to work for. And I personally did not do this. I kind of stalled out. And once I hit right around my goal score, actually a little bit higher than my goal score, I was like, all right, I'm good to go. Kind of just put myself on coast neutral and handled it until it was time for my impact. I do wish I had pushed myself a little bit further just to see if I could add another point, two more points, three more points. And this kind of goes back to the first thing I wish I had known, I, or the second. I don't necessarily, I didn't necessarily need those scores, but it's always good to push yourself a little further if you're achieving where you want to be. So I would highly recommend to set a goal score, set a stretch score, and once you hit your stretch score, keep kind of inching it up and see how high you can go. Alternatively to that, you don't want to set your stretch goal so high that you get discouraged or even your general goal. If you are starting at a 490 and your goal is a 520, you're going to get super discouraged. So start small. First, 490, I need to get to like a 500 or 505. Then once you're there, move it up a little bit more. So your goal is not to get it so high you've discouraged yourself. You just want it slightly outside of your comfort zone so that you're pushing yourself a little bit further to do better than you currently are. The fourth thing I wish I had known is that there is some value to the topics you're learning on the MCAT for medical school. So there are things that will show back up like chemistry, physics, biochem, things that you never thought you were gonna see again, maybe like fluids will show back up in medical school. And I actually do a video kind of talking about why you need to understand that. So definitely check that out in our strategy course. And our fifth thing is along those same lines. Another thing that you will need to be able to do in medical school that the MCAT trains you to do is take a seven plus hour exam. And that's one of the reasons why the MCAT is kind of a filter. It's not just about your score. It's about can you sit through a seven and a half hour exam and still think, still answer questions and still get some correct. And that's something you want to consider because in medical school, uh, in my school, we have to take seven hour exams for all our exams or seven plus hour exams, almost eight hours for some of them. And even if your school doesn't do that, you're still going to have to take your step exams, all of those seven plus hours. So you wanna make sure that you're familiar with how to do that now. And one of the things we've done in our strategy courses, we've talked a lot about how to approach the mindset and strategies to handle seven and a half plus hour exams so that you can get through them and not only just get through them, but be successful when you come out the other end. We also have strategy focused tutors. If you feel like you need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one work to help you really nail down the strategy to get through these exams.
The sixth thing I wish I had known is that you're more than just your MCAT score. And this is something that becomes really apparent once you get into medical school. There are people with all sorts of scores and it doesn't correlate to necessarily how they're scoring in medical school. So they might have done really well in the MCAT, be struggling in medical school, vice versa. So your MCAT score does not define you. And it's something that once you're in, it's not really talked about anymore. Nobody really cares that much anymore. So your MCAT score is more of a means to an end. And it's something that you're not going to hold on forever and identify with forever. And once you're in school, then it becomes about school and how you're doing in school. And I think the best way to think about this is your MCAT is your foot in the door, so to speak. And people and admissions committees especially understand that life happens. Some people take the MCAT with the goal of scoring as high as possible. Some people take the MCAT knowing that they need a specific score to get into a specific school they want to go to. And some people may start the MCAT with a grand goal to get a 525 and end up having some life event, event that kind of steps in and they need to adjust their goals. And so Admissions committees recognize that and know that you're more than just an impact score. So the side note to that is make sure that you're developing other attributes, no matter how high your MCAT score is or could be, so that you can show you're a well-rounded person because that is something that admissions committee care about. Nobody's going to ask you when you're a physician what your MCAT score is or was, but they are going to ask you about your skills that you've developed from different extracurriculars that help you interact with patients. Number seven is mindset. So the MCAT is a beast of a test. It's probably the first time you've ever taken an exam that may be this long. And frankly, it's just demoralizing when you feel like your entire academic career up to this point is relying on you getting a good test score. And so one of the things you have to do to be able to cope with this is you have to be able to be mindful. And I talk a lot about this in another video, different techniques for mindfulness as you're going through the MCAT. And this is another one, like a lot of things on this list, which is not just useful for taking the MCAT, but will also be helpful down the road as you're going through medical school. Number eight is to stop judging and comparing yourself. I also talk about this in another video because it's pretty prevalent, but you wanna make sure that you're focused on your story because that's your story. That's what you can control and you don't know everything about everybody else's story. People like to show their highlight reels, which is natural and that's just how it is. So don't try and compare your full story to somebody else's highlight reels because you're just going to get discouraged and it takes away the mental capacity you could be using to improve your MCAT score and improve your application for medical school. And that leads a little bit into number nine, which is know your why for why you want to go to medical school. What is it that drives you? Is it a specific instance? Is it a scenario? Has it just been something that's been with you for a long time? Really identify this before you embark on taking the MCAT because it's going to help you have a clear mindset about why you want to be a physician and why you're even taking this test. And if you understand why you want to be a doctor, you understand why you need to take the MCAT and then the MCAT suddenly becomes easier because you have a reason for that. The number 10 that I'd like to leave you with is I think probably the most important, which is once you know number nine, once you understand your why, number 10 is that medical school is so worth it. It can be exhausting, frustrating, and there are a lot of downs as well as ups, but ultimately it's extremely rewarding. You're learning so much information and honestly, it is the best academic endeavor that you can embark on if it's what you truly want. So. Just know that once you get through the MCAT, it's really worth it and you're going to enjoy what you're doing. And it's a place where you're just a really in a great learning environment to just absorb all the information and be with people in their most personal moments. And that's a gift that you can't get in many other careers. So know that all of the struggle you're going through now will be worth it when you're able to work with your future patients and help them through some of their most difficult moments or their happiest moments even. And you get to be a part of that because of the work you're putting in now. So keep that in the back of your mind as you're going through your MCAT prep and just know that you can do it. You can be successful and it is possible to get a good MCAT score and get into medical school and do well in medical school. So if you want some help achieving that so that you can get to that place where you're in medical school and happy to be there, please check out our free strategy resources and our tutoring resources. They are going to help you master the MCAT, conquer the MCAT so that you can move on and get started with your medical school journey and ultimately your medical school career.